it. Yeah, very beautiful, absolutely stunning. All right, cast me off. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. This is where you say, repeat after me. Ah, the serenity. Ah, the serenity. <laughs> So here's a little story. When we were setting off in 2015, I was reading the Patrick O'Brien books, uh, Master Commander series, which is an amazing, amazing. If you haven't read the Patrick O'Brien books, go and read them. I went to a Chandler and bought a very cheap monocular. We, we never used it, did we? It was tiny, it had a really small magnification. Everything was foggy inside. Getting onto this boat, a pair of actual decent binoculars. It's like, oh my God, this is what we've been missing. These are only 750s. Ah oh, yes, <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> there are some really good brands of binoculars out there. And if you do have a brand of binocular that you are like, happy with, just let us know down below because that is something we are on the look for. Anyway, there's my binocular story. <laughs> we now need to continue our, continue our day. question mark over what the depth is going to be like in the mooring field and also a question mark over how protected it's going to be from this, the wind probably Ooh. not very a lot of fetch a lot of fetch so we'll get there pick up a boy if we can get to the boy if there's depth which i'm sure there will be and uh, then we'll reassess Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, very beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Very happy. Lovely day to be out in the water. There's a wind shift today, uh, and the other thing is, you know, about wind shifts. And again, this is for those of you who are new to sailing, those of you who are old hats will know all this. Topographical features, mountains, hills, really do make wind fluke around. So again, you may find that on your weather forecast it says wind is coming from the south. But if you're anchored inside a headland, that could go from the north if everything wraps around it. So you have to be aware of your topographical features, and sometimes it's local knowledge. More often than not, those of us that kind of are sailing in unfamiliar waters, it's just about it's just about understanding, um, you know, trying it out and then seeing what happens. Yeah, it's quite breezy. There's a there's a fair breeze. I mean, honestly, we've got. I know that in our catamaran views we bang on about ventilation. I still stand by the fact you could probably get a sheep through there. Anyway, look, so uh, lovely day. This the you get a walk in it? sheep, a sheep. What do you say to that? Well, it's about the size of a sheep, isn't it? <laughs> I know that a lot of the comments we get are "you lucky, lucky bastards." We this know. We know. We are fully aware. Like, don't think that we're sitting here going, "Oh, oh yeah, national park, national schmark." Like we realize how absolutely crazily fortunate we are to be doing this, even in non-COVID times. You know, in a time when, you know, the entire world is shut down for us to be sailing in March, 2021, 
yeah, it's pretty nuts. Shame we don't have a fishing rod on the boat or I could spectacularly fail at catching fish again. <laughs> yeah, really enjoying it. Really lovely settled weather thus far. And uh, yeah, uh, enjoy this episode. There's a fishing boat right on the nose. The man has got a red jacket on just yeah. to locate it. And then after that, I'm gonna pass that and go into that bay. Um, uh, I'm going to anchor in about five meters of water. Now this anchorage is not actually on the chart, nor is it um, in our cruising guide, but we saw some boats anchored over here. In fact, one of them's on a mooring boy. We thought that looks like a very, very lovely place to um, spend the day. So we're coming over here to check it out. It's fairly well protected from the wind. Yeah, that beach looks absolutely lovely. So we'll drop the anchor in a minute. What's the depth, babe? 17. 17? This is the deep channel. Okay. Where are you aiming? I'm just going to bring it in a little arc. Yeah. Probably about where that boat is now. I'm assuming that boat will go in. Yeah. And almost anchor up on the beach. It's so small. Yeah. They can just lift the leg and drive it up there with a stern anchor. Yeah. You reversing? I would have gone in further, but that bloke literally just zipped in and picked up that. That's okay. We can we can move closer later if you want. Oh, to. he won't stay tonight. Oh, he won't probably stay for even an hour. We're fine here. Yeah. What? How many meters are we in? It's like six. The shelf is really savage. Hmm. Do you want me to put it down a bit? Yeah, pop it down. Pop it down to this tall, and then I'll uh, reverse it. Take it. There we go. Yep, all good. Oh no, sorry. No, I didn't put enough out. Sorry. Sorry, I thought the bridle was taut, but obviously... Oh God. Do it again, my love. There we go, that's better. Yep, cool. Yeah, yep, okay. all good. But honestly, Therese, it, it was shelving so quickly, I'd, I'd rather just... Hang back. Just hang back. Like literally, we're in, we're in no one's way. Yeah, no, it's all good. All right, so what are we doing? Well, we don't have a dinghy anchor. Uh, yeah. And I think there's a secondary anchor in here, so I want to make sure, to see what size it is. That's not a dinghy anchor, babe. No, that is <laughs> most certainly not. Mm. Okay, so we don't have a dinghy anchor. How mysterious. No. No. Oh, okay. Jeez. Yeah, that's a full cage, babe, isn't it? Time to get those kayaks in the water and test it out. That's not what I would call a kayak, to be fair. To me, a kayak is a thing that you sit in and use oars with. So we've been carrying around these kayaks for as long as we've had the boat, and we've yet to actually use them because we're not really kayaking people, and you might have noticed that, you know, when we have, a, well, we had a stand-up paddleboard, but we never really use it. I don't know, it's just not our thing. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. There's the steering mechanism. Oh god, that looks complicated. Alright, cast me off. Alright, alright, ready? Yep. Godspeed. <laughs> you don't have a rudder, brilliant. Oh, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible to make those things look cool, but I do know that um, if it is, then Nick didn't quite manage it. <laughs> How are you going? Do you want to go? I feel like I will fall in. Am I just going sideways? Goodbye. <laughs> it's actually okay. I know. It's the opposite end of the surfing spectrum. It's the opposite end of the surfing <laughs> spectrum, definitely. Jesus Christ. Let's go. 
Ready? Yep, hop, 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 hop. Ow. God almighty. Alrighty. <laughs> Let's go. Am I sitting up now? Ooh, we're here. Ooh, please. Alrighty, ow. I did it. <laughs> ow. Well, this is nice. This is very nice. This is like the advent for sandals. <laughs> Not quite as glam. With my beach ready body. <laughs> and a nice little spot next to a little creek. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. None too shabby, my love. This is where you say, repeat after me. Come here, repeat after me. You say, ah, the serenity. What? You say, ah, the serenity. Is it in a pirate style? No, you do it in Arr, a- the serenity. No, you do it in a broad Australian accent. Ah, the serenity. Ah, the serenity. <laughs> ah, the flaming galah serenity. What are you talking about? Is it from home and away? Is it a from and away, he says. God, I should slap him for that, shouldn't I? He loved the serenity of the place. How's the serenity? I think he also just loved the word. So much serenity. Fellow Australians, comment down below. You know what I'm talking about. It's a thing. What does it mean? It's a quote from a film called The Castle. It's a like... Oh, you asked, it's all going about that, didn't you? Yeah, it's a, it's a quintessentially Australian film. It is like... Is it like the... If you want to understand Australia, then you watch The Castle. Listen That's all to you me. need to do. I got my entire Australiana when I was a kid from Crocodile Dundee and Naples. Yeah, well... And... So that, that could explain So everything. far it's held true. I don't know about that. <laughs> call this a knife. <laughs> you call that a knife? God, real beer tastes good, doesn't it? Yeah. So we've been, uh, everyone, we've been drinking, and I please don't judge us for this. <laughs> please don't <laughs> unsubscribe if you want to. <laughs> yeah, we, we won't blame you. <laughs> but we have been drinking non-alcoholic beer for the last week. In but the there's a reason. What's the reason? The reason is that I drank a six pack of this last Sunday. I didn't actually feel as if I drank a thing, and I kind of where do you get to the point where alcohol doesn't affect you? Yeah, but then you woke up with like a raging hangover. Yeah. Am I allowed to put this little bit of music Yeah, it's just a little bit of trouble. So we're just forcing ourselves to drink a really lovely bottle of uh, Little Creatures Pale Out. God, that tastes good. Yum. You don't know, you, you can drink what you want, you know. I know, I can't drink by myself, though. Do you know what? These back, forward, backward seats. They are amazing. Yeah, sunset, and you want to play guitar, you can just put one leg higher than the other. It's just perfect. Literally, I can sit here in almost the perfect position. I'm very glad that we're getting those seats for the 13th century.
Is it, are you going in the right direction? I don't see any discernible trail. Yeah, you said I'm not going to get lost. Whose idea was this? Yeah. You okay? <laughs>